Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Hello, everyone, and across the world. Um, maybe you're watching this from YouTube. That's right, I have a YouTube channel on now. Um, for those of you that are watching it via Facebook, or maybe this link was posted to you via Twitter or stuff like that. But I just want to say welcome. And I am so glad to be with you today, and I have a lot of exciting things to report to you. Not only will you gain a biblical understanding about these things, but you will also know how God is at the center of all this. I want to begin my story from back, um, it's not this December, because it hasn't happened yet. We don't know if it's going to happen, and should the Lord tarry. But anyway, um, one of the things that has happened last December, last Christmas, um, I was in Virginia, and I was just really going through a bad, bad funk. You know how I, you know how you get me. Um, I wasn't focused on God. I was focused on temporal things. Wait a minute. I, um, for those of you that know who I am and know my name, um. You think, well, you looked like you were doing a good job. Well, if you asked me how I was doing last this September, I would have told you fine, good, but I, on the inside, I wasn't. I was struggling. I was ugh, broken inside. I was callous, burned out, and I didn't care about life. This past December, however, I found myself I couldn't sleep one night. And then I f thought to myself, well... I guess I can do the only thing that I can do, and that is read my Bible. Well, as it turns out, um, I I grabbed my Bible, and I went into a place I thought would be most uh, where I could concentrate. I couldn't do it in my room because in the room I was in because a I was in my grandmother's house and b Daniel was asleep and I didn't want to wake him. So I went into the bathroom. Don't ask me why, but that's the room I picked. I grabbed my Bible, went to the bathroom, turned on the light, and began to read. And I read from Psalm 144 and Psalm 145, and instantaneously, as I began to read and read and read and read, God's peace came over me. The Holy Spirit literally came over me with peace. Right after I finished and I went to bed, I went to bed with a big grin. I went to bed smiling that night. And I, that was the happiest I had ever been in a long time. That point on, I have not stopped reading the Bible. I do it every day now. I do it every day. Every day. Sorry, um, for those of you that I, I kind of stopped in midstream, something popped up on the screen I had to click X and get it out. But anyway, I'm now in the Bible consistently, reading God's Word, and it is changing me, and it is inspiring to me. I want to tell you one of the lessons that I learned from God. Lesson number one, don't go through your problems, grow through them. Ever thought about that? As I think about it, I think it's an important lesson to learn. God wanted me to learn that. And he told me, hey, look, Ben, you have got to grow through your problems. You can't just go through them. Because if you go through your problems, it implies that you're trying to get it over with. When you grow in, your, in the midst of your problems, it means you're learning about life and you are learning through Christ. Christ is the teacher. You are the student. But I think this one is going to really... Put on the brakes. And you're probably going to think, whoa. Seriously? He told you that? Oh, yes, he did. I'm going to tell you something that God kind of spoke to me. I was reading on the return of Jesus Christ. You know the second coming? A lot of you that are believers, my fellow brothers and sisters, you know about this. For those of you that don't know, um, Jesus Christ came to the earth. He's the Son of God, risen Savior of the world. And you can disagree with me if you like, but, that, but whether you... Agree or not, that's who he is. He is Lord. He is God. He loves you. That's why he came the first time. Then he ascended into heaven. The angels then said in Acts chapter 2, Men of Galilee. Actually, it's Acts 1. Acts 1. He said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand there gazing into heaven? 
this same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come again in the same way that you saw him go up into, he into heaven. It's Acts chapter 1 if you want to look that up. But I, I didn't read that verse in particular, but I did read about Jesus' second coming. And I'm like, okay, good lesson. I didn't really didn't think much of it. I'm like, okay, that was good, and uh, I'm going to go do my own thing. Well, uh, God had other plans. Other plans, I know. He had other plans. Well, how do you know that? Because I began to... By the way, this is my smartphone. And notice, it, it, I can pull it up. It has the notifications on there. But at the bottom of this... At the bottom of this is the music app, if you can see it. Let me see if I can, if you, I don't think you can see it. But basically, right around here, at right here, right here, where I'm pointing, this is where the music app is. And I press it, and there is a button on this screen, it's called, um, I have it in Spanish, because I'm learning how to, how to read and talk and speak in Spanish, by the way. But there is a random button. It's, you can't see it because of the bright light, but in short, there's a random button. And I press the random button, and it randomly plays a song. Well, I press the random button, I'm gonna, and all my music is Christian. I don't listen to any country. I don't listen to any pop songs. Why not? Because they don't honor God. Anything that doesn't honor God doesn't belong on my smartphone, okay? Nothing should belong on my smartphone. Now, recently, so, somebody just... Uh, uploaded these songs that I have absolutely no care for and don't want to listen to them. I've been trying to delete them, but I can't... Anyway, beside the point. Point is, I, I, turn, I press the random button and the song that pops on is extraordinary. It, it's, it, it, it's extraordinary. It connected back to my devotion. I heard these words in the back of my head. I'm coming back soon. The song, what was the name of the song? FFH's song, Fly Away. How incredible. I blew off the lesson, but God said, don't blow that off. It's serious. Not too long after that, God led me to a sermon by Pastor John Hagee of Cornerstone Church in San Antonio, Texas. His work on the Blood Moons was inspired by none other than the original founder, Mark Biltz. Not Blitz, it's Biltz. His, they, everybody calls him Mark Blitz, but it's Mark Biltz. B-I-L-T-Z. Looks like Blitz, but it's not. But Mark Biltz was the original guy that God revealed the Blood Moons to. From that point on, it was revealed to John Hagee, then to Jonathan Kahn. Have you guys been reading about the Shemitah year? We're, in the, we're, we're currently in a Shemitah year right now. Really? Oh, yes. Well, what's the Shemitah? Excellent question, and I am going to explain that. But first, I want to try to get through my story. Long story short, God has been revealing to me things that are happening right now that usher in, that God is literally saying, you better pay attention because I'm going to come back. And I'm closer than you think. What gives you the right to say that? I mean, everybody's been saying that. There's been war. There's been disease. All this stuff's been happening, you said. Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. But it hasn't been happening in a Shemitah year, or during the blood moons, or the fact that both are happening at the same time. According to Billy Graham... Billy Graham was interviewed by Troy Anderson, a, found the, a journalist who actually started a Facebook page called World Prophecy Network. And I've been following that page, and one of the quotes that Billy Graham gave, he, according to Troy Anderson, he said, quote, The signs are converging for the first time since Jesus predicted them. Now, Billy Graham is considered America's pastor, and I consider him the greatest evangelist of all time. Now, if he can see the signs, we should be able to as well. Because Billy Graham, I mean, aside from those titles, he really is just an ordinary man, just like the rest of us. But he's been he's willing to be used by God 
And he's done incredible things because he has tapped into God's power and he has been evangelizing. And he's gone all across the world with his crusades. Let me tell you something, friends. We are in the last days. How do you know? The Bible says in Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. Daniel 12, um, I'll quote it for you. It says, But you, Daniel, this is God talking to Daniel, shut up these things to the time in the, of the end, for many will come and go to and fro, and knowledge will increase. Knowledge will increase. That's a sign. In the last days, knowledge will increase. What do you think happened? From the Garden of Eden unto the unto 1800, the 19th century, there has been one mode of transportation, communication, and all this stuff. We've been riding with pencils. We've been riding horses. We've been communicating by uh, writing letters. It wasn't until the 1900s that the developing of the car, the airplane, the computer, the telegraph, the TV, all these models of information and knowledge... This is what people do. You know how they invent these things? They go to school and they experiment. This is how knowledge increases. You learn how to do something, that's knowledge. This computer, what I'm broadcasting to you right now, wouldn't have been made. wasn't made back in the 1800s. This laptop computer actually was not possible until 2000. Such a, co uh, such a computer was considered wow. Because back in the old day, when the computer first came out, it was as big as one full room. And now it is compacted into a small little notebook size flat screen TV model. Pretty cool. But that's the thing. Knowledge increasing. What's another sign you say? Another sign is... Jerusalem. What's currently happening out there? Well, nothing. Are you sure? Because apparently the Palestinians and the Israelis are having a fight over it. Jerusalem is under deep scrutiny from the Palestinians and from the Jordanians. Jordan has actually talked about revoking its peace deal with Israel. They made in 1994. Where do I? Where are you getting all this? I'm going to explain where I get my information. So you could go check it out for yourself, and I'm going to let you decide. I'm not going to say you have to believe this, you have to believe that, you have to trust this source. I want you to decide. That's going to be your decision. I'm just going to pitch you what God has shown me. But God has also been revealing to me the spine of Matthew 24. What happened in Matthew 24? Well, Jesus said that there would be, Take heed, no man deceive you, for many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and they will deceive many. That's happened. Ooh. Jose Luis de Jesus Maranda. Who is that? He is a Hispanic pastor who believes that he is Jesus Christ. You kidding me? Kid you not. He doesn't believe there is a hell, and he believes what you're living in right now, this is heaven. Seriously? Yes. This is a real man. Look him up. He's on there. There's another man. Um, he came on a show. I think it was native. It was Britain because of the host had a British accent, but it could be in the U.S. I can't remember, but you can look up this guy. Um, his name is A.J. Applewhite. He claims to be Jesus Christ himself, and his girlfriend claims to be Mary Magdalene. What? Yeah. A lot of people out there. Crazy, eh? This is what Jesus said would happen. Many will come claiming, I am he, and will deceive many. There was actually a pastor a while back, long time ago. Um, this was long before these two came along, or long before God's laid it on my heart to talk about prophecy, but this pastor claimed to have evolved into Jesus. Apparently this pastor, I forget where, and then there's this woman in a third world country, she claimed to be the daughter of God. She went around doing miracles, and then when she said, when I die, don't be afraid because I will rise on the third day, third day comes around, she doesn't rise from the dead.
Many will come claiming, I am he, and will deceive many. There will be lots of false teachers. Now, there will be some that don't claim to be Christ, but still teach the wrong thing. How do you know? Joel Osteen. You watch him? Watch out. He's bad. Oh, whoa, whoa. I like Joel Osteen, you say. Listen. Joel Osteen's wife actually came out and said, We don't come to church to worship God. We come to church to worship ourselves. She said something like that in a little broadcast. We have got to be careful about who we listen to because they, if they don't teach the Bible from the Word, chances are they don't believe it. Well, that's only one incident. Okay, I'll give you another incident. Joel Osteen's come out and said, there is no hell. He is also a prosperity gospel preacher. What's a prosperity gospel preacher? He says that if you accept Jesus Christ, nothing bad's going to happen to you. You being serious? I'm being dead serious. I know. Because I've looked him up. And I have heard from very good, credible brothers and sisters that have said his teachings are false. Joel Osteen is not someone you can trust. If anything, you should be praying for him that he would that his eyes would be open to the fact that he is deceiving others. Well, how else? I mean, he's not that bad, is he? He supported Pope Francis, and we all know, and for those of you that are true brothers and sisters, you know that Pope Francis is a fraud. He's very friendly to gays. He says that atheists and gays can go to heaven. He actually came out and said that evolution is necessary. Evolution is a separate theory, and it does not involve God. Whatever God says in his word, that's what happened. Not what man says happened. Well, now you're causing trouble. Well, listen, I'm telling you what, I'm just the messenger. I speak what God says. I don't speak what I say. This is what God says. Genesis 1-1. In the beginning. In the beginning. This is what, the start. People believe it 6,000 years ago. I believe that. But some Bible scholars depict and say that it's 10,000 years old. Others say it's at 20,000, 25,000 years old. But no older than that. But that's an argument for another time. Anyway, in the beginning, last part, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created it. And how did he do it? He spoke it. There was no bang. There was no anything that gathered together. And then, boom, God spoke it. What the Bible says is true. I don't care who you are, and I don't care what you say. If you disagree, okay. You can disagree. But please understand that this is your soul that we're talking about. This is holy God. This isn't just some other prophet like in it, like an Islamic terrorist named Mohammed. Well, he wasn't a terrorist. Well, you can you can take it you can take it or leave it as whatever and I don't and honestly, I don't know if he was. Some people are saying that, and others are saying he's a pedophile. Well, you're going to have to look up Islam, because I don't know that much about it. What I do know is that it doesn't teach the Bible. Any religion that doesn't teach the Bible is a false one. I disagree with you. Okay? But just so you know... The Bible isn't just a storybook. It's a prediction. Whatever is written down, prophecy-wise, is going to happen. Last days, Jerusalem is going to be a center of controversy. What's happening there? Palestinians? Israelis? Boom! What are they fighting over? The Temple Mount. Coincidence? Zechariah foretold this. Zechariah chapter 12, verses 2 and 3 form it out completely. Now, in my study of the end times, I have been... Okay, are you going to touch on the rapture, you may say? Well, okay, let me touch on this real quick. The rapture will happen. The Bible pr points that out. When it happens, we don't know, because no one knows the day or the hour. 
but we know it's close to happening. We're not saying if. Mark Biltz, however, came out and said that it's going to happen on the Feast of Trumpets on a year that he doesn't know. But, I mean, that's what he believes. I say, mm, you don't know the day or the hour, so I'd be careful. Nonetheless, though, these things are happening. Well, we don't have famines. Oh, we don't. Look in West Africa, the same place where Ebola is. They have a famine out there, and they're still struggling with it. Famine is a lack of food. We have famines beginning to occur in the United States. How so? We have people in poverty. They can't even eat. Sure, we have organizations reaching out. There's some that will go to bed hungry. They'll die of starvation. We have famine in this world. What about the, what about the wars and rumors of wars? Oh, you've heard about that. Hamas strikes Israel. Russia strikes Ukraine. Backs off. Now they're back at the Ukrainian border. What? Yes, they are. Russia is back at Ukraine's border, and they have troops there. And they are ready to attack once again. Don't believe me? Look this up. I encourage you to look it up, but as far as I, from what I've gotten from my sources, whom I think are credible, it seems like a legit, a very legit story. Wow. You're, if you are on the edge of your seat, or maybe you're thinking, okay, well, what's the another, another sign? How about pestilences? Luke 12, Luke chapter 21 talks about pestilences. There would be famines, there would be pestilences. What are pestilences? Diseases, plagues. Ebola is one of them. Dengue fever, which actually broke out in China and Japan. The, the MERS syndrome, which broke out in Saudi Arabia. The bird flu in Egypt. There's another bird flu that's in Russia. How about in Pakistan? There's a polio outbreak. Where are all these diseases popping up? I don't know. What I do know is that there's a whole lot more. There is a whole list. And there's actually, I would estimate, 15, or 20, 15 to 20 diseases in the world. And there are 18 new viruses, according to Fox News, that have been reported to be living in rats that actually reside in New York City. If you're living in New York City, be super careful. There was an Ebola case there, believe it or not. Not sure if they have that contained or if he's been centralized. But, well, now why are you telling me all this? Because it's part of prophecy. What else has he said will happen? Well, how about persecution? Jesus said in Matthew 24, and he said, and you will be handed over to be persecuted, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. Mark 13, verse 11 says, this is Jesus speaking, he says, Whenever you are arrested, speak, but don't be afraid to speak. For it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit that will give you the words to say. And I'm not, I'm not quoting it word for word, I'm kind of paraphrasing, but that's basically what the verse is talking about. Brothers and sisters, believers in Christ, we are going to get arrested. Well, I haven't been arrested. Have you been under scrutiny for your faith? Yes. Welcome to the persecuted clan. That's what you're going to see. And with these days growing worse, persecution is going to get worse and worse. It's going to get harder. Give you an example. There was a story out a couple, that Mr. and Mrs. Knapp. They own a chapel in Idaho. And apparently the judge at Idaho says you must celebrate same-sex marriage or you will be jailed. They can't do that. Well, they were about to. On the motion that they needed to celebrate same-sex marriage, but they said, see, here was the story. A same-sex couple, two men, came up to them and said, will you marry us? The Knapp said they politely declined, saying we don't do that. But then the government, the state government gets involved and says, ah, 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 ah. You have to marry them, or you're going to be jailed. 
And on top of that jail time, they were told that they were going to be fined $1,000 every day they refused. That happened? Oh, yes, it did. Well, you're just a fear monger. I'm not a fear monger. I'm not trying to strike fear. I'm trying to let you know what is happening in the world today so that you can be alert. I'm trying to raise awareness to the fact that these are not just normal days anymore. These are the last ones. Pastor John Hagee believes that we're not going to be, the world's not going to exist like this after 20 years. What does he mean? He means that he means to say that Christ could come back within that time. We don't know. He could actually come after that. But I'm just saying, there are signs in the heavens. What a, You mentioned something called the blood moons. Yes, the blood moons. We've already passed two of them. We're in the second one right now. The second one? Yeah. What happened between the first and second one? Well, it was Ebola. ISIS rose. Russia attacked Ukraine. And Israel was attacked by Hamas. Lots happened during that time. What's happening now? Second blood moon. Persecution. Have you noticed that? Persecution's on the rise. People are getting slammed for their faith. This one little girl in Salem, Massachusetts was telling a street evangelist to, quote, shut up. I have never heard an inconsiderate, rude little girl tell a man who's trying to express his free speech to shut up. It is so appalling to watch. But it shows the moral decay that was prophesied. There's more to... Oh, yes. Matter of fact, in the last days, lawlessness will increase. What have we seen? We have seen lawlessness increase. Referring to the beheadings. We've had beheadings in Chicago. We've had... Be we had a terrorist in Chicago. We had a beheading in Oklahoma. We had a terrorist shooting in Fort Mill. All these things. We've even had a, a, a terrorist... Errorist shooting in Canada. Canada's parliament got breached by ISIS lone wolf terrorists. I'm telling you, lawlessness will increase. How about this one? Um, the Ferguson, Ferguson, Missouri. Riots against police. And actually, Ferguson, Missouri is still unrest as there are still riots being done there. When is this going to stop? It won't. But that that's impossible. Why? Jesus likened these to birth pains. He said these are the beginning of birth pains. What birth pains? Birth pains before the birth of the new age. The new world order. That is set to happen. According to the findings of Jonathan Kahn... The Shemitah could play a part in that. What's the Shemitah? Leviticus 25. Leviticus 25. What's Leviticus 25? Leviticus 25 is this. This is what it is. Leviticus 25 talks about the Sabbath year. The Hebrew word for Sabbath year is the Shemitah. And the Shemitah year, this is what happens. Israel was to work six years and rest on the seventh. Pretty much like work six days, rest the seventh. Can, do you remember that? So, not only was there a Sabbath day, there was a Sabbath year. The Sabbath year is meant to be a blessing. It means resting, relaxing, do not plow during that area of land. God will provide and stuff like that. Well... Okay, so that has nothing to do with America. That was actually given to the Jewish people. True. However, the Shemitah comes in the form of a judgment to a nation that has removed God from its life and culture. Know any nations like that? Um, I know what you're thinking. I, oh, I know China. That, that's a good possibility. China is very opposed. Have you thought about America? No. We have God on our billboards. We have in God we trust. You may have the motto on the coin, but do you live it? 
The nation as a whole does not. The Bible says, Wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many will find it. Small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life, and few will be there that find it. Many people, the Bible suggests by that verse, that there is not going to be many believers. There's going to be actually more unbelievers. That's what it suggests. And whatever the Bible suggests or says needs to be taken seriously. Does that mean my best friend won't go to heaven? No, not necessarily. They can. God still, God, the grace, the, the window of grace is still open, but let me tell you something, that window of opportunity is getting smaller and smaller. Eventually, there will come a point where there will actually be no way they can get into heaven, even when they cry out to God. That day is coming. The age of grace is almost done. Now, hold up. What, why would a loving God allow this? This is why. God is a loving God. He's a patient God. He's a gracious God. But he won't wait forever. He's patient and he's long-suffering. But he is not going to wait. Not forever. He has waited long enough. He has been given you chance after chance after chance. And what do you do? You spit at him. That's kind of rude, especially to the man that came all this way from heaven to earth to die on the cross for you. That, I mean, that that's just that's just appalling to think about. Why would you turn your back on someone that cares so much about you? I I wept one day. Because I was reminded of this song, Softly, Tenderly, Jesus is Calling, Calling for You and for Me. And I almost get, and my heart just mo is so moved. So I'm going to offer you that right now. Jesus is softly and tenderly calling. Are you going to respond to his call? Are you going to say yes to Jesus? I would love for you to join the family. I'm not a pastor. I'm just a regular college student at the University of South Carolina. And to be honest, I tell you this only because I care about you. I don't tell you this to condemn you. I tell you this because I care about you. The Bible says that when the Son of God did not come into the world to condemn the world, he came into the world to save it, save the world through him. Verse 17 of John chapter 3, John chapter 3, verse 17, now quote it word for word. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world. He did not send his Son to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. He wants to save you. But he cannot do that unless you let him in. Revelation 3.20 Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and those that, those, and he that lets me in, I will make my home with him. Jesus is knocking on the door. Do you feel that tug saying, hey, I think you need this? Well, why should I need Christ? I'm doing fine right now. Have you ever disobeyed your parents? I have. Have you ever murdered someone? No. Okay, let me ask that again. Have you ever hated someone? Yes. Then you've murdered someone. That's not murder. According to the Bible, it is. 1 John chapter 3, verse 15. Anyone who hates his brother is a murderer. Jesus even followed that up with his own saying. He said, Ed, you have heard it say, do not murder. But anyone who says to his, who is angry with his brother is in danger of judgment. Of being one. Being like a murderer. Have you ever lusted? Yeah, why does that matter? Because the Bible speaks against that. Jesus said, you have heard it say, do not commit adultery. What does that mean? That means you slept with someone before you're married. I cannot tell you how many times I have seen my friends do that. It just makes me so disappointed to see my friends in that kind of state. That they would not want what Jesus offers. 
or they actually put themselves in a tempting situation. But that's a topic for another time. If you've lusted or murdered, the Bible says anyone who is guilty of breaking some part of the law is guilty of breaking all of the law. James chapter 2. And it is... You know what? I'm not I'm not condemning you. Cuz I cuz I actually did some of that. I've been angry with somebody. I've hated somebody. I've lusted. I've disobeyed my parents. Bible says honor your father and mother. Bible says children obey your parents in the Lord. New Testament. Old Testament says honor your father and mother. Both are connected. And both mean the same thing, but what about what about anything else? Have you lied? Yes. Then you've sinned. The Bible calls that sin. The price of sin. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. You and I deserve death on a cross. We don't deserve anything good. We don't deserve any blessings. We deserve to die. And matter of fact, we deserve hell. We deserve to go there? Yes. Because we're sinners. We're not good. Jesus said, Mark chapter 10, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. No one is good except God alone. Romans 3.10, Paul writes to the Roman church, There is no one righteous, not even. He said that. He said that. So, what do, what am I supposed to do? I I mean, if we are sinners and our our destination is hell, is there any hope? Yes, there is. I mentioned earlier that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, and you can still have. That relationship with God. You can have that. But you must first accept Christ into your life. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. He's the only way. Don't let other people tell you there are multiple ways because that's a lie. It contradicts the Bible, therefore it is a lie. Accept Christ. Romans 10, 9, and 10. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You're, you can be saved. The Bible goes on to say, Romans chapter 10, verse 13, or is it verse 12? I'll have to check, but it says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Everyone and anyone that calls on God. You want to know the good news about that? Um, I mentioned the first part of Romans 6.23. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. That's the first part of it. But, there's the, another part. The second, the last part of it says, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. You can have a relationship with Jesus Christ today. So what, should I pray? You can, but I'm going to tell you this. Prayer doesn't save you. Reading a Bible, quoting verses, all that doesn't save you. What does? What you do with it in your heart. Remember what I said? If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead. Too often nowadays we put our emphasis on you must pray to receive Christ. When in reality, it's all about what you do here. You can show it out all here. You can show it on the outside like you're saved, but you can't hide it from God. God knows your heart. I believe it was in the Samuels, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. The Lord said to the prophet Nathan, or Samuel, he said, Don't, uh, Do not think that I have chosen this man, because I haven't. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. God looks at your heart. Are you serious about him? Confess it to him right now. If you want to accept Christ, 
Now, when I now I'm gonna pray a prayer, something that you can follow along. But this doesn't save you. Are you gonna apply it to your life? Are you gonna take it seriously? Is this gonna be a heart change, which would lead to a life change, or is this just gonna be a magic prayer you pray and then hope you get into heaven? That's a question I'm going to leave up to you, but as, but if you are wanting to accept Christ, you can pray this with me. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Come into my life. Forgive me of all my sins. All the bad things I've ever done, or ever will do. Give me the power to live a Christian life. I receive you as Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, good. However, if you don't do anything with it, then we'll, you'll know for sure if you're really saved or not. Because it's not about praying a prayer. It's about change that starts with your decision, your heart what you want okay just want to give you that brief rundown and let me tell you something these birth pains are not going to end if you've accepted jesus christ i encourage you to stay in the word stay in the word what what's the word the word is the bible don't have a bible um you can go to and try looking up verses online and there's even a, a, a site I recommend that you – it's called blueletterbible.com. You can read the Bible book by – chapter by chapter and book by book if you wish. Blueletterbible.com. That's for your information. If you don't have a Bible or maybe you do, I would start reading in the book of John. It's a good book to read. And keep an eye out. On the eastern sky because something tells me we could see Jesus come back sooner than we think but we don't know the day or the hour Jesus says watch and pray so be praying for each other but also be watching because our Lord is coming Jesus said and I close with this when you see these things begin to happen lift up your face your redemption draweth nigh Luke chapter 21, verse 28. Thank you for listening. God bless you all, and I hope to see some of you in heaven.